Picking up where we left off after talking about comas, this is part two of chapter four. Conscious awareness involves attention. At any one time, each person can be conscious of only a limited number of things. Attention is based on automatic versus controlled processing. Things like driving, walking, and riding a bike are automatic after we learn how to do those actions. The moment you start to think about those actions while doing them, it becomes controlled processing. The cocktail party phenomenon. You may have experienced this. In noisy situations, at perhaps a party or sporting event, you can still hear your name, even if it's directed at you or about you. If somebody just mentions your name, you'll be able to hear it. This also works for other things that are very important to you. If they're on your mind, and somebody says it nearby, you'll hear it. Here's an example of automatic processing versus controlled processing. The first picture, an experienced driver can rely on automatic processing while performing this task. The next picture, an inexperienced driver must use controlled processing because the experience is new to them. And in the last picture, during a rainstorm, an experienced driver must revert to controlled processing because the situation becomes more precarious. And now selective attention. This may not mean exactly what your parents said it was when they were trying to get you to do things. First we'll talk about filter theory. A Donald Broadbent developed this theory, filter theory, to explain the selective nature of attention. Attention is like a gate that opens for important information and closes for irrelevant information. Some stimuli demand attention and virtually shut off the ability to attend to anything else. Decisions about what to attend to are made early in the perceptual process. And you'll see I've got two links on here. If this were an in-person class, I'd be clicking on them and walking you through these two videos that I have. They're fun. I would like for you to do it. First, the first link. You may have already seen this video. Some people have, most haven't. Follow the instructions and you'll be amazed at the results. Then after you finish the first video, type in the link to the second video and it builds on the first video. So if you've already seen the vi first video and you're like, ah, whatever, watch the second one because it builds on it. Which brings us to change blindness. This is a failure to notice large changes in one's environment. Change blindness illustrates how selective an individual's attention can be. If you watch those videos, then maybe you saw the gorilla walk through the middle of the space. Maybe you didn't. That's how this works. You were paying attention to the students passing the basketballs and counting the passes. Because your attention was directed at that, you missed the gorilla. Then in the second video, you might have thought, aha, I know this trick, I see the gorilla, but you may have missed the fact that the curtain in the background changed colors. That's change blindness. All right, another example of change blindness is done by the same guy, in fact, Daniel Simons. The hypothesis is people can be blind to large changes around them. A participant is approached by a stranger asking for questions. The stranger is momentarily blocked by a large object being carried by two people as they go by. While being blocked, the original stranger is replaced by another person. They switched as the, uh, the blocking object went by. The results where that half the participants giving directions never noticed they were talking to a different person as long as the replacement was of the same race and sex as the original stranger. The conclusion was that change blindness results from inattention to certain visual information. Unconscious influence. We've probably heard the phrase Freudian slip before. This occurs when an unconscious thought is suddenly expressed at an inappropriate time or in an inappropriate social context.
are people affected by subliminal messages. Thought and behavior can be influenced by stimuli that are not experienced at a conscious level. Subliminal perception. This is the processing of information by sensory systems without conscious awareness. Advertisers have long been accused of using subliminal cues to persuade people to purchase products. Those subliminal cues have been shown to have little to no effect on complex actions. Here's an example of sub subliminal perception in print. Do you see the subliminal messages in this 1971 advertisement? Some viewers see suggestive imagery, such as the word sex spelled out in the ice cubes vertically. A little bit of a stretch, but there's other ones out there too. There's things you can see in the camel on the camel cigarettes package. If you're interested in such things, search on the internet. You'll find all kinds of examples. And this does, does conclude part two of chapter four.